everyone, and welcome back to CountryCast. Dolly Parton is a national treasure, a country music icon, and one of the most beloved souls and successes in all of entertainment. At 77 years old, Dolly Parton finds herself at the very top, the pinnacle of music. She holds some of the most well-respected and largest accolades and awards that you can obtain as an artist. We're talking from having her hit song, Coat of Many Colors, preserved by the Library of Congress National Recording Registry, to being a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame, a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Songwriters Hall of Fame, Grammy Hall of Fame, along with 10 Grammy Award wins and a total of 53 nominations. A slew of music award wins throughout her career, such as CMA, CMT, ACMs, Billboard, AMAs. We can go on and on. I mean, you name it, she's won it. Rightfully so. And it is really a whole video in itself to just go through and dissect each and every win from each of those award shows. However, we have to mention her multiple lifetime achievement awards and, of course, her win of Entertainer of the Year back in 1978 at the CMA. CMA Awards. And finally, wrapping up our quick recount of Dolly's major successes, her astronomical amount of number one singles, and of course her number one albums throughout her career. So yeah, y'all get the picture. Dolly Parton is the exact definition of an icon. And what is so impressive is that even though Dolly has clearly solidified her name in the history books, she was able to make all of this happen through many ups and downs, tragedy, and hard-fought battles within the business. Her story and her journey is very powerful, and today we are going to take a look back at the harder life and times of the queen herself, Miss Dolly Parton. We are going to kick things off right at her very humble beginnings. Dolly Rebecca Parton was born on January 19, 1946, in a small town surrounded by the Great Smoky Mountains and at the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, Locust Ridge, Tennessee which also borders near the cities of Gatlinburg and Sevierville. Out of the 12 children that her mother, A.V. Owens, and her proud tobacco farming father, Robert Parton, had, Dolly was the fourth child, and along with juggling 11 other siblings, Dolly and her family lived poor. Dolly's mama and daddy made do for the family in a log cabin that consisted of just one bedroom and a kitchen. For those that have visited Dolly Wood, you may have seen the replica of her childhood home. Now, not only was the home extremely small, but the log cabin also did not have electricity or running water. According to a prior report from MSN, Dolly said once that they would go to bed at night fully clothed, and the only warmth that they would get was when one of the children would wet the bed that they shared with one another, while others used beds made of straw. Parton and her family would also go to the river during the summer months to bathe, sharing soap that they made themselves, and when it switched over to winter, the family would share a pan of water. Another interesting fact that shows Parton's family's financial struggles early on, again, according to the prior report from MSN, Dolly Parton's parents paid the doctor who delivered her in cornmeal. Even though times were tough and money was tight, Dolly, of course, being the wonderful person that she is, has talked about how rich they really were during an interview with the Today Show back in 2015, where she said, We always made jokes and said we didn't even know we were poor till some smart aleck up and told us. We didn't have any money, but we were rich in things that money don't buy. You know, like love and kindness and understanding. Now, if that right there does not move you and give you inspiration, well... I don't know what will. Along with the financial struggles that Parton and her family faced during her youth, it is also where she met tragedy for the first time. At the young age of just nine years old, Dolly lost her younger brother Larry after he passed away just four days after his birth in July of 1955. In 2016, Dolly shared details surrounding Larry's passing and the effects that it still has on her and her family now. Parton was interviewed by TV critics prior to her holiday movie that year, Coat of Many Colors, which depicted her early life. Parton told the interviewers, My mother through the years when we were born, since there were so many of us, used to say, This one is going to be your baby. That just meant that you got to take extra care of it. You have got to get up with it at night and rock it back and forth. 
This particular baby that passed away in the movie was my baby. So there is a lot of heartache and stuff that goes on with that. Now, during her upbringing, one thing that Dolly did cling to and played a significant role in her life during that time, and clearly beyond, was music. Dolly learned her passion for music through her mother and her grandfather at an early age, where she played on a homemade guitar around the age of five, and then at seven years old, her uncle Bill Owens gifted her a guitar, and within three years, she became a regular on the Knoxville, Tennessee TV broadcast, the Cass Walker Farm and Home Hour Show. Over the next couple of years, Dolly Parton continued to gain attention with her music, and by 13 years old in 1959, she made her debut on the Grand Ole Opry, where she first met the man in black, Johnny Cash. And the following year, at age 14, Dolly Parton signed a record deal with Mercury Records. However, the singles that she released during the time bombed and Parton went back to finishing high school, continuing her journey on finding a deal, but sticking to music, where she also played the snare drum for her high school, Sevier County High School Marching Band. But being told no was not in Dolly's playbook. As soon as she graduated high school, she made the move to Nashville, Tennessee, in hopes to find success in country music. Well, we all know that she did, but it came with some speed bumps along the way. Dolly Parton and her uncle found a break after a man named Fred Foster signed them to a publishing deal, writing songs initially, and then eventually Fred Foster made the move to sign Dolly to a record deal with Monument Records. At first, Parton was being pushed to the pop markets with her second single from Monument titled Happy Happy Birthday Baby. It nearly charted, but the stage was really set after country singer Bill Phillips took two of Parton and her uncle's songs to the top 10 on the charts. The songs were Put It Off Until Tomorrow and The Company We Keep. After the success of those two singles, Dolly broke through with her next single, Dumb Blonde and it peaked at number 24 on the charts, with her next single, Something Fishy, peaking at number 17 right behind Dumb Blood's run on the charts. And it was those two hits that got the attention of country music star Porter Wagner, who at the time was looking to get a new female artist for his TV show. As most may know, Porter jumped on the opportunity and brought Parton over to his program where she replaced country artist Norma Jean, who was regularly appearing on Porter Wagner's show. Now, at first, Porter's audience was not fond of Dolly and would even boo her and chant that they wanted Norma Jean back, but Wagner stuck by Dolly. However, most of Dolly's work came as a duet with Porter, and her solo singles at the time were not getting much steam at all. By 1970, Wagner came up with the idea to have Dolly sing Jimmy Rogers' classic song, Mule Skinner Blue Yodel No. 8, and needless to say, it helped launch her solo career more so than it had been doing at the time. After covering Jimmy Rogers' song, Dolly released her song Joshua, which became her first number one single, and for the next couple of years, she landed many number one solo hits with, without duetting with Porter. But the one single that really set things into motion and catapulted her into superstardom was her signature song, Jolene. And not long after Jolene made the gargantuan waves that it made, Dolly Parton finally made the decision to exit from Porter Wagner's show, which became another mountain to get over for Dolly because Porter did not want her to leave. In an interview with People Magazine back in 2021, Dolly shed light on the details surrounding her exit from Porter's show, where she said, I think Porter had a real hard time after other people started recording my songs. And I was writing and I was getting to be pretty popular. And it was his show. I wasn't trying to hog it, but I just kind of carved out a little, you know, place for myself. But it was a love-hate relationship. We fought like cats and dogs. We were just both very passionate people. There was no way that I wasn't going to do what I was going to do. And no way I was going to not do what he thought I was going to do. When I was trying to leave the show, I had told Porter I'd stay five years. It had been five, and it was six, and then it was seven. He was just having a real hard time because it was gonna mess up his show. We were very bound and tied together in so many emotional ways, and he just would not hear it. So I thought, 
do what you do best, just write a song. So I wrote the song, took it back in the next day, and I said, Porter, sit down. I got something I have to sing to you. So I sang it, and he was sitting at his desk and he was crying. He said, it's the best thing you ever wrote. Okay, you can go, but only if I can produce that record. And he did, and the rest is history. One piece to note as well is Porter did take it a step further and sued Dolly over leaving the show and contractual agreements. He sued her for $3 million. Parton did settle and paid Porter a million dollars in installments over the next several years. And by 1980, the two had reunited and went on to forgive one another where they ended up recording their reunion album together. A really wild way to get your foot through the door and make it into your own success, but it was nothing that Dolly couldn't handle. And what a career she has had. And like she said, the rest of her musical career is history. But there were more roads along the way that she faced. Fast forward to the 1980s, even with all of the limelight from her success, Dolly Parton went through a very dark time as she contemplated taking her own life. During a nine-part podcast series back in 2019, Dolly Parton's America, Dolly Parton shared the details surrounding that time in her life. Parton said, I got overweight and I was going through the change of life. I was having a lot of female problems. I'd been going through a whole lot of family things, just the stress, the heartache. There was just several things going on at the time. I was just broken down. I was having some serious conversations with God during that time. I just said things like, look, this is ridiculous. I am not happy and arguing about why when they say you shouldn't commit this act because that's a sin you can't get forgiven for. Everything was just confusing to me and I was just angry and I was hurt and I was unhappy. And so I just said, you're going to have to get me some answers or I'm getting out of here and then we'll both deal with it. She then went on to explain what saved her life in that moment. My little dog Popeye at the time, he jumped up on the bed about the time I was writing my, you know, God is dog spelled backwards and I always thought that might have been the very thing. Now, around that same time as well, Dolly has spoke publicly on her depression after undergoing an operation and learning that she could not have any children of her own. But Dolly's strong will and faith brought her out of her dark time. According to Mirror, in her 2017 book, Dolly on Dolly, Interviews and Encounters with Dolly Parton, she wrote, After that, my life changed in a positive way. That frightening moment with the gun was very, very humbling. I kind of think it was God's way to bring me to my knees long enough to pray. Dolly Parton's career continued on and found, like I have said multiple times, much success in her career. And then to fast forward to now, where loss still lingers with Dolly. Throughout the latter part of her career, she has lost another brother, Randy Parton, and her longtime friends, Kenny Rogers and Loretta Lynn. All three were dearly close to Dolly. Dolly's longtime singing partner and friend Kenny Rogers passed away first on March 20th, 2020, at the age of 81 years old. The magic and history that those two created were some of the most defining moments in country music's history. Dolly's brother then passed away on January 21st of 2021, at the age of 67 years old after his battle with cancer. And finally, Loretta Lynn, her fellow queen in country music and a very good friend, passed away on October 4th, 2022 at the age of 90 years old. From Dolly's humble beginnings to moments of heartache and tragedy until now, she has overcome so much and to be a light for all in music and life. She is a true icon, an artist that will forever be recognized for her loving character, personality, musical abilities, film work, and of course, her mothering nature. She has never forgotten where she has come from, and her charitable donations and efforts will remain with her legacy as well. It is truly a blessing to have Dolly Parton represent country music. Dolly Parton will forever be one of the best to ever do it.
Guys, thank you so much for tuning in here today and following us along on Dolly Parton's journey. If there is a song or an album or a memory of Dolly that you would like to share, please let us know down in the comments below. That will be it for today's video. As always, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. And remember to turn on those notifications as well so you never miss out on any breaking updates surrounding your favorite country artist and all the news coming right out of Music City. Y'all stay country.